Finally, a race victory and some positive momentum for the seven-time world champion. The move to Ferrari will definitely be on Lewis's head after the turnaround that Mercedes had. Ferrari have proven to be race winners in 2024, but will the car suit the most decorated driver in the 2025 F1 season? To find out if he will, I had to go over a bunch of onboards in 2022, 2023, let at least half of the season for 2024 go by so I can see how this Ferrari car is, to have some idea of the characteristics through these regulations with the Ferrari cars and what both drivers prefer going off of Leclerc and Carlos Sainz and what they've been able to do with these cars. Obviously this is speculative because he isn't in the 2025 car and we won't really know, but we can base it off of what the drivers have had, what their preferences were, and will it suit the preferences of a driver like Lewis, who I've covered in two videos now. So we'll briefly go over what Lewis likes and needs in a car, and then follow up with why there's so many positive and negatives to this Mercedes and Ferrari move. So with that in question, will Lewis be able to drive the Ferrari car with his driving style? You guys asked from the beginning of the season to make a video like this, now I can finally make it. So if you're new here, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Let's go get these big milestones, would be amazing, and thank you for the support. Let's get into the Lewis Hamilton video. To start off the video, I wanna talk about Lewis Hamilton's preferences in a car. As I've stated before, I've made a video on what he loves, how he's a late breaking king, but also the negatives to what the 2024 car started with and what he didn't like in 23 or 22. He's been able to push the car's boundaries when it comes to braking. No other driver has a style like this because it requires a huge amount of trust in the car and to be able to rotate the car very well on the normal driving line due to trail braking. The problem this causes is a lot of tire wear. It's been stated before, it's even been talked about in this season with the 2024 car as to why his qualifying hasn't been that great is because by the time he comes to sector three, he's used up most of the tires in sector one and two due to that late braking style and hitting those apexes how he wants to, which then ends up causing a good amount of tire wear and making sector three a much harder job for him to extract that maximum pace that he can get in qualifying. This obviously doesn't make him a bad qualifier, but he's always been more of a race driver, kind of like Alonso. When you do have this preference of braking late and a slight understeer in the wheel, these drivers tend to prefer the race where they can use more of the wheel and hack at it and brake later while also being able to be good on the tires due to experience. This does mean that he needs a stable rear end to be able to do what he does in those apex zones to be able to brake late and hit the line. This is why the 2024 car so far, the Mercedes has suited him the most. In 23, the rear end was incredibly weak. In 22, he had the tires that he liked. He was trying a lot of setups in the beginning of the season, which ended up causing him to lose a lot of points on George, which in the end result lost him out, at least in the points battle between him and George. In 23, he dominated George, even with the car he didn't really like, which is a big thing to know, and it will be talked about later on in the video. But the 23 car had a lot of bad preferences that he didn't like with the unstable rear end. It was a bit oversteery, as we could see issues of that in a lot of GPs last year. Through this regulation period, the Ferrari car has changed from 22 to 24 a lot. But let's talk about what each car has preferred and where the car has been best with Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, and will this suit Lewis Hamilton based off of what we have on data in 22 to 24. The 2022 car was a championship winning car, at least in the beginning of the season. The updates ended up failing it through the middle part of 2022. And when the TD directive came, the Ferrari definitely fell behind. So we'll talk about mainly the beginning of 2022, where the car had a super strong front end and was a more oversteery car. Very good in the corners, definitely preferable to somebody like Leclerc. It's why we saw Carlos Sainz go off the track. How many times did he go into the gravel in that 2022 season? mainly because the rear end was pretty weak on the car. It was super strong on the front, which Leclerc in both for stop and love, but Sainz likes to drive a bit of a boat when it comes to understeer. Him and Alonso are to the maximum of understeer. Lewis is not to that degree. It had a weak top speed, but had great rotation in the low to medium speed corners. It was very strong in high speed also due to the downforce. This then completely changed at the start of the 2023 season. They added a lot of top speed to the car and they had a great balance in the beginning. The car turned to be more understeery in the beginning of the season. And as we got to a point like Zanvor where Carlos ended up beating Leclerc for about three to four races in a row due to the updates that were coming to the car, it preferred to have some understeer to it. As we could see in the low speed corners and medium speed corners, the car did have a rotation problem 
but it was better on its tires because that was the biggest problem with the 2023 car. They added an update in Japan, which was definitely preferable to a driver like Leclerc. He ended up actually going seven and zero in qualifying against Carlos Sainz. And the car did improve. The balance was much better, a little bit on the oversteer side towards the end. They improved upon that tire wear, which was a huge thing now going into 2024. Out of the three cars, the 2024 car is overall the most balanced out of the three. It's got good rotation. You can use it in both understeer or oversteer if need be. The window was very high in the beginning of the season, but now as we've came to the British GP, that window has become a lot smaller and now the car is doing different things. Leclerc has had a tough time in the past four races. Sainz has been a little bit better at it, but overall the team has struggled to put this car in the right window. As I said, the car can be used in both preferences, but as of right now, the car is actually more suited to a driver like Leclerc. It's mainly due to misfortune as to why Leclerc has been behind. Oversteer is a bit of a preference right now on the car, and Carlos even talked about in the beginning of the 2022 season, he had to adapt his driving style to the Ferrari car because it was more suited to Leclerc. And as the seasons have gone on, other than 23, Leclerc has had the more dominant hand in how the car should be performing and where his feedback is being put into. Both Ferrari drivers drive very differently. Leclerc loves oversteer, Carlos Sainz loves understeer. I go a lot more in depth about Leclerc's driving style in a different video for Carlos Sainz that's being worked on, don't you worry. But the basics of it is massive understeer, a good amount of oversteer between the two drivers. So what are the positive and the negatives that I've been able to take out from looking at these cars and what the drivers have understood of it? The positive is all these Ferrari cars through the 22 to 24 season have been very strong on braking. That's why we saw the win in Singapore. That's why we've seen in 2022, it was able to compete with the Red Bull in the beginning of the season. And in 24, we saw them be very strong in Australia. Monaco was another example of a great performance. And that's something Lewis loves in a car. It has to have the late braking that he prefers. Tire wear has now gotten much better. The car does have a warm up problem in qualifying that actually would not go against what Lewis likes in qualifying. It'd probably help him out. Yes, it would be a bit tricky to get under, but he likes being able to fire up the tires because of that late braking, and it would help him lie in the race as well. Rotation has always been good in the car. That's why we also see another great performance in Monaco in 2024 and the win in 2023. It's, it's been a constant through these regulations that the Ferrari has had some of the best rotation on the grid. It will be able to give Lewis that preference of being able to rotate the car after trail braking and going hard into that apex, which is always a positive from his side. Last positive is the car has been adaptable through the 22 and the 24 season. So if the car does start off in a way that Lewis doesn't like it, through updates, they've been able to at least change that preference. But when it comes to pace, that's a different story. Now, obviously the negatives and something that I think is a big problem as of right now that I hope they change by 2025. A big talking point in 2023 was the cockpit of the W14, that it was too close to the front wheels and Lewis wasn't able to feel the rear end of the car. Well, the SF24 and even the SF23 are very close to the front and have the cockpit most towards the front wheels. It's the cockpit that's furthest towards the front of the car, meaning that a lot of the balance now will be more dictated towards the front end, which Lewis doesn't like. This was a big talking point in 2023 even in 22, it was something that he didn't prefer, but was changed massively for the 2024 season as to why he's having a better year, I would say. This does make the car now more oversteery with a stronger front end, which then also gives it a weaker rear end because of the way that the car's balance is set up and the weight distribution, exactly what he didn't like in the W14. This makes the balance go all over the place, especially with the current SF24. The window is so small in comparison to what they had in the beginning of the season, which will definitely make Lewis struggle picking up on the Ferrari car. So what's my conclusion going over everything that we did? Will Lewis have a good time in the Ferrari? Will he be able to drive it in his driving style? And will he be fast compared to an extremely fast driver like Leclerc? My opinion is that he will be very fast in this Ferrari car, even with the negatives. If we look at the difference between Carlos Sainz and Leclerc, who have very different driving styles and preferences, to a guy like Lewis Hamilton, who's more of a middle grounded driver. He can drive with both oversteer and understeer. He does prefer the car to have a stronger rear end than front end, but he's able to adapt to both. We saw what he was able to do in the W14, how badly he beat George Russell, who actually likes a car on the front end in comparison to him. And when you give him time to adapt, he's always up there with the front runners. I do see him as a better driver than Carlos Sainz 
in general throughout his career, obviously. And I do think he's gonna put up a fight with Leclerc, but it's gonna be close. And it's very questionable to see what they will go for in this 2025 car, considering he probably has no input on that right now. It will be a more suited car to Leclerc. That's the one thing that has me kind of hesitant on how it's gonna go in the beginning of the season. But as he adapts, he'll be back there with the big boys. What are your thoughts? Did you guys enjoy the video? If you did, please give it a like and subscribe. It would mean the world and peace.